Oh, uh, it's a bourbon. Mm -hmm. Jack Daniels Black Label with water. Oh, that's good. There you go, man. Some lubrication for, throughout the day. Mostly Jack Daniels and a tablespoon of water, it tastes like, but still. Well, thanks for taking Which the time. I know uh, you're busy and you're infamous and uh, a lot of people want to reach out to you. And the reason why I reached out is quite simple. I saw that you reinstated your campaign to run once again. Yes. Sir. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This is my question I have with politics, and hopefully you can answer this question for me, Mr. McAfee. Every time that I, I, I hear these uh, candidates running, uh, I get confused because none of them have a clear fucking set of policies. I have real no fucking idea what they're talking about, what they stand for. So hopefully you can tell us today, uh, you know, you're running right now. What is your policy? Like, what are, what's the foundational principles that you're running for? I, I have none. And I have not. I have not. Let me be. Let's. Can we be honest? Let's be. As honest. human beings, and you know what life is. If I told you, I have a policy. We're going to fix this and fix that and fix something else. Then you would know one of two things. I am purposely lying to you, or I am inadvertently lying to myself. And in either case, would you vote for me? Fuck no. Why? Because no one can have an answer. People, do you understand our system is broken? And the flow of what should be information about the world to the people who create the government, which should be open and free, is controlled and propagandized by our covert fucking agencies. But so... Yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't have a fucking clue how to fix it. I do know how to fix you because it is on your backs, each and every one of you, that this nightmare survives. You carry it. You carry it through your belief, through your affiliations uh, to Democrats or Republicans or some dichotomy that gives energy to your life, like, oh, I have a fucking opponent. Yes, you do. But if you're Democrat, it's not the Republicans, and if you're Republican, it is not the Democrats. It is if you are one of the people, it is the government which we have created. Yeah, so talk, but talking about the government that we created, like let's say hypothetically you're getting voted in, like what would you do? Like what's the actual things you would do? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah. What could a president do? President's got no power. This is the problem, people. Please, do you think presidents get elected um, and they take office in a system where lifetime employees, like the CIA, where you never retire and never quit? You've been there an average of 40 fucking years, and the president, an average of four. They are called transients by the permanent employees of the government. That's the government, people. <laughs> Everybody else is a puppet. Political appointees, who cares who is appointed as the head of the CIA? Because the CIA just laughs them off. Another transient that's sitting in that office for four years. Well, we're not telling you jack shit. Well, that's not the real attitude. The real attitude is, oh, yes, we serve you. <laughs> you are our boss. Wake up. In the second Gulf War, it was in the CIA's interest that Iraq get bombed into the Stone Age. They were a thorn in the side of the CIA master plan for the Middle East. And so what happened? The uh, emperor of CIA in the Middle East, whoever that is, and we'll never know, goes, I want this country bombed into oblivion. I want it done tomorrow. Are we clear? And it goes to Washington. And the CIA goes, yeah, fuck, he's serious. You know, he's, gonna, he's either going to quit or do some silly shit if we don't make it happen. Okay, Ted, you and Jeff, you know the president, make this happen. And Ted and Jeff go, uh, we got uh, free reign, boss. You got free reign. Oh, that's easy then. They go into the president's office. Oh, Mr. Bush, please. Uh, we have an issue of such grave importance that you must drop all other affairs. And please, 
Mr. President, sit down. We have just discovered that not only does Iraq have nuclear weapons, they have the missile capability to deliver them to London, England, our closest world ally, Mr. President. And, Mr. President, we, we fear that if action is not taken immediately, there will be an attack on London within 24 hours. Now, Mr. President, we are not here to advise you. <laughs> no, no, no. We are, are simply here to inform you of uh, uh, the facts, and we will play no part in the actual carrying out of your of, uh, decisions or directives. Fuck me, that's what happened, people. President's got no fucking power. Who controls information? Controls the fucking power. Wake up. But then why, why, are, you run, why are you running then if the president has no power? I don't want to be president for fuck's sake. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right, so let's, flip, let's flip this question then. Let's flip this question right here. Uh, I, I agree for the most part. You know, Chomsky has a great saying, the party's in power. It doesn't matter if you're left. doesn't matter if you're right. It's one party power, and that's the government. And like you said, it's a limited job. Bureaucracy grows on a yearly basis. You need new bureaucrats, and it's, it's, it's a cancer of government. It just constantly needs to grow question to you is like you said at the beginning is changing an individual what are people what, what are things people can do today to better themselves to better themselves sure there's only one thing you can do people and first you got to free yourself before you can better yourself and what does freeing yourself mean it, it means vomiting up all of the garbage the propaganda the mainstream media manipulations that have created your uh, external version and vision of what the outside world really is. But that's not it, people. It doesn't matter who you elect. Why do we have such animosity between the right and the left? Because it's in everybody's interest that there be some. It keeps us entertained. We have an enemy. I'm a Democrat. Uh, my enemy is Republican. Oh, no. I'm a Republican. My enemy is a Democrat. Suddenly, you have both a cause and a common enemy. You're going to play that game forever while it does not matter who wins because whoever does, like Obama, for fucking years making Obama care. What happened? Gone. Nothing can ever change. Got Trump's wall, 93 miles have been built. However, let's look at it. 91 and a half miles for repairing existing walls. So please, God, nothing changes. The powers that be don't want change. Change brings what? Uncertainty and unrest, which is the only thing that can throw the power off of the shoulders who, of those who currently own it. Do you see the truth, people? Wake up, make some noise. That's the power you got. Take to the streets. You want to see some goddamn power before. Anyway, next question. <laughs> All right. My next question is uh, you've been in the crypto space for a long time advocating the technology. Where do you see the where do you see this all fit into your equation of, of the future? How does crypto help people? Well, it sure as hell doesn't help the way it's being used now. Which is, uh, oh, let's get rich quick. Sure. Let's buy coins, hold them, save them, hope they go up, sell them. Fuck me, people, wake up. Get you some fucking privacy coins. Get jobs that pay you in crypto and get yourself off of the financial grid because there are tens of thousands of us that don't live with fiat money. We don't touch dollars and yens and euros. Why? We don't need to. Now, Yes, you're right. We can't go down to the random coffee shop and get a latte. <laughs> it breaks my fucking heart. Um, we can get everything else, cars, houses, food, jobs, everything in life that you need through crypto. So until you free yourself financially, meaning I don't care how much money you make if you're still a slave, money stays with you in your fucking cage, and money will not free you, people. I promise you I have had more than God, and money will never, 
ever free you. Courage is the only thing that's going to free you. And so belief how, in your own self. So how, how, come how did, over. How did, you get, how did you get your courage? What was, what was that one moment when you realized? That <laughs> I didn't have a moment, dude. I mean, from a lifetime of life saying, you know, courage. Well, take this, you motherfucker, and then slap you around more. Just like you go to prison, which I've done many times. <laughs> you do not whimper or fucking cry. Mm. No, because you're going to be the play toy and the entertainment for everybody else. So I know this as well as anybody. No, you got to have courage and faith in yourself. And that's all. And so, you know, you talk about courage, you talk about crypto, you talk about the fact that, you know, the one, one party system at the end of the day, and you, you talk about, you know, for change to happen, people come to get, got to get together. But in, in, in all reality, like, let's be, let's be honest. Do you see that in general society is getting better? Like overall, like quality of living, less wars, or do you think that's all a pile of rubbish? Uh, if, uh, since when? And because of what? Let's say in the last hundred years. Oh, in the last hundred? Fuck, please God, let's look at history. I mean, we went from things like the Civil War, which, well, I mean, allegedly uh, whacked 400,000 people in a tiny country at that time. It's World War One, which went into the uh, seven or eight millions. The World War II went into the hundreds of millions with tens of millions civilian purposely eradicated. Please, God, have we gotten better? <laughs> no, we've gotten stupider. We continue to trust those that we put into power to serve us. What idiot thinks that anyone is going to ever fucking serve you if you give them power? <laughs> what did your mothers and fathers teach you as children? I want to reach through this monitor and grab you all by the throat, shake you and say, wake up, children. Good God, I don't know what has happened, but the general IQ of you goddamn millennials has gone from 160 down to something you can count on one fucking hand. Wake up. Wake up and use the brain that you were fucking born with for your own self-interest. I'm not really, going to do it for really you forever. Where people have more of affinity to trust government. I think it's like... Yes. No, 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 no. Not trust. No, 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 no. No. They have a greater affinity to misjudge the truth of their existence. No, they don't trust the government. They just think the government doesn't have much power. They are blind to the fact that that government that they do not trust has put them in a tiny, dark cage which gets tinier and darker every fucking year. That's what you don't see. Of course you see you can't trust the government, but fuck me. A three-year-old knows that. You watch South Park? Yeah, you know that. Fuck me, people. Who cares about the trust? You can't trust anybody. Of course you can't trust the government. Who do you think you can trust? Your mother? Your father? Why don't you look at history? Roman emperors? Who killed them? Their fucking mothers? Their brothers or their fathers? Please. Or their children? Wake up. The world is not the nice rosy place that social media and, and memes uh, make it out to be. Oh, people, that it's harsh. And and it's dangerous, and and it's an adventure. But you got to wake up to the truth of it, or you will be eaten alive, and soon. But it's not going to happen on my watch. I mean, I'm seventy-four. Hopefully, I'll live another year or two. It's not going to happen if I have my breath and my freedom still, which gets. <laughs> a slimmer and slimmer chance every year. Well, I've made it so far, and no one knows where we are. Praise God, I hope. Yeah, listen, I think uh, there's a lot of interesting things that you, you mention, and I agree with a lot of them, but some of them, 
listen, I agree with you that social, uh, I think that social media has ruined a lot of people's perception of reality. I agree with you that a lot of people don't inherently trust the government, but they only believe that's the only system. My issue with a lot of people who are angry at the status quo system is like, what's the solution? Like I talk to, like, I'll tell you myself, I'm a fucking hardcore libertarian. I've been to jail as well. I've been shot. I've been stabbed. I've gone through. I've been through all the fucking ringers as well. And that's my default character behavior. For me, when I see people just bitching, like you have these leftists who are crazy with the government, even have like crazy right people. Like I rarely see fucking solutions. So like what are solutions to make things better? That's my question to most people of any spectrum. Like what can we do today that's, that makes sense, that's logical, that we can start implementing? The one and only thing that has ever been offered to any human at any point in human history, which is here, is the way out. There are tens of thousands of us living it now, people. We don't give a shit about taxes. We don't give a shit about anything except what is right humanly here and now. How do we do it? with the courage to say no. 10 years ago, I said, no, I'm not paying taxes anymore. Illegal, come and get me. Well, they didn't. They ignored me for eight years. Well, I've already paid over $50 million in taxes, people, and I promise you, I have not received $50 million in services from this monstrous nightmare called our government. So I ain't paying no more. That's what I did. Well, that forced me to go on the run and now underground. But cryptocurrency came along and I chose to accept, adopt, and make that part of my heart, my mind, and my life so that my freedom through it could be an example for others. So you want to know what you can do? Stop supporting and carrying that monstrous nightmare that you've allowed to happen, sometimes even voted for. No, stop. Come over to this side. Come over to this side. So this is what I think I hear you talking about. And there's people who've been doing it for a while. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I agree with you 100%. Uh, we need representation for taxation, as they say. And for the most part, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in volunteering for everything. I'm a non-aggressive libertarian. And uh, you have something today where it's like uh, intentional communities where people are opting out, they're living off the land, they're hunting, they're, they're farming, and uh, they're trying to work in or go to jurisdiction, which almost as minimal possible taxes. And I even see some now they're trying to opt in for as much as they can to use cryptocurrency. So correct me if I'm wrong, are you kind of talking about that more or less? Let's build more intentional communities and live in the moment and live yes, now? Yes, but that's right. But we don't have to be with crypto. We don't have to be hunters. We don't have to live uh, off the grid. We don't have special communities. We don't have to know each other. We just have one common purpose. I know that there are tens of thousands of us now. And you know the names, Brock Pierce, Roger Ver, John McAfee. Do you think we touch fucking currencies? Dollars, euro, fuck. I haven't seen one in years. I don't know what they look like. No, I'm stopping playing the game. And we'll play it no more. When we all stop, <laughs> the game stops. People see the truth. You are the power. Your acceptance of this shit you're saying, well, maybe we do owe taxes. Please, God, before 1913, we had none, and we were the economic giant of the fucking world. And that 2% tax was the beginning of the end. Are we the economic giant? Now, fuck no, we don't produce anything. We're a goddamn service economy. We clean the fucking toilets. Taxation was the end of civilization. People, wake the fuck up. Stop that. <laughs> it falls apart. It falls apart. But anyway, this is my opinion, and I don't insist on this whole opinion. 
<laughs> Listen, I, 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 I'm for, I'm all for taxation is theft. That's, I have no questions about that. Um, let's, let's wrap this up. So, you know, you just mentioned you, you fell in love with crypto talking about uh, freedom, people getting courage, people waking the fuck up, uh, people taking self responsibility. Let's leave it off. Let's leave off of this. What would you say if you had one message to tell people out there, the McAfee message, what would that be? Well, if it's through crypto, it's one thing. If it's just the general world, it's another. For the world, it's For the world. do what you love and nothing else. Nothing else. If you, it, listen, if you don't wake up on Monday morning with a thrill in your heart and soul and mind because, God damn, you get to go back to work. If you don't feel that, I promise you, you don't love your job. Don't go in again, ever. I wouldn't even bother to call my boss and quit. I've quit two jobs without telling my boss. I just walked away. They were so worthless that they were not worth the time to formally quit. So, not just your job. What about the person that you fell in love with seven years ago and for a year or six months or who knows when, there was nothing else in the world except that person and the clouds you were walking on and the joy and bliss in your fucking heart. And seven years later, it's gone, and suddenly the person that's in bed with you is a stranger. Mm. Leave. Walk out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. No need to be coy, Roy. Just set yourself free, as an old 60s rock song once said. Or, or the, or the, that would be my message. Carpet diem, as they say. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank well, you so much. Thank you so much, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right.